Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our exclusive Global Leading Voices webinar campaign. We are delighted to have you join us here today. Please be informed that if you have any questions during the presentation, you may type them into the question box in your control panel. The presenter will answer your questions at the end of the presentation accordingly. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to our presenter, who will begin shortly. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah. Yeah, welcome. Good afternoon, good morning, and sometimes good evening. My name is John, John McDermott. I work for Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and I'm the EMEA Portfolio Manager for Education and Training. And I've been invited here by our good friends at PECB to talk to you about ISO 20000 and ITIL, a great combination for your IT skills. I think that's a terrific title. I've been working with ITIL for over 30 years, and in terms of ISO 20000, I was working for an organization called the ITSMF, the IT Service Management Forum, who started the creation of ISO 20000. And it first began as a British standard, BS 15000. But it was quite clear that, it's, that this isn't just a British standard. We wanted this to be an international standard. And so once we'd achieved BS 15000, we fast-tracked it into ISO 20000. And that's where we are today. Obviously. All those years ago, we did several iterations, and now we're at ISO 2000 stroke dot dot uh, 2011. So I'm going to talk to you this afternoon about ISO 20000 and about ITIL and why the two are so closely linked and why, therefore, your skills in service management, or ITIL skills, if you like, are a great combination for you to use and adopt ISO 20000 and why we should adopt it. You know, why, sh why should we adopt a standard like this? But anyway, I'm going to talk to you about the following. This is our agenda for this afternoon. We've got about 40 to 45 minutes. We're going to have some questions. So what I suggest you do, put your questions as we go along into the question box. And then my colleague or my friend, Arita from PECB, at the end of the 40, 45 minutes, we'll then read some of these questions out and we will answer them as we go along. If we've got lots of questions, then what Arita has and PECB have, have uh, agreed to do, they will send me an email with all those questions. I will then answer those questions. I'll then pass them back to PECB and they can then be put out there as maybe a, an FAQ, a frequently asked questions on this uh, webinar stroke seminar. So we're going to talk about IT management and say, wow, it's getting complicated out there. Then we'll talk and focus on 20,000. Then we'll talk and focus on ITIL best practice. And then we'll talk 20,000 and ITIL. So we'll start comparing uh, you know, elements within ISO 20,000 and elements within ITIL. We'll then obviously go on to some uh, education and certification about ISO 20000 and, of course, ITIL, and why this is good not only for you as an individual, you know, because everybody asks, what's in it for me? Well, what's in it for you as an individual? You get certified, you get an, a, a badge or a certificate that is universal, and by that, I mean it is valid in the United Kingdom, which is where I'm based. It's valid in the United States, where a lot of my colleagues are based. It's it's there and, and certified in Outer Mongolia or even Brazil, you know. So anywhere in the world, you have these certifications and they are recognized globally, which is fantastic. So let's get back into the agenda and talk about IT management because ISO 20000 is a standard on service management. Let's have a look at it. So uh, we just said IT management is getting complicated. So why is that? Why is it getting complicated? Well, quite simply, look at this screen here. We want businesses and organizations to manage our costs. We need to get to market fast. So the, com the conversations we're having now with businesses and organizations is we want to improve our time to value. We want to be faster. We want to be cheaper. We want to be smarter. Yeah, that's all well and good. And we want IT, you guys in IT, you're doing a great job, we want, but we want you to do it better. Okay, faster, smarter, cheaper. Faster, smarter, cheaper. And uh, oh, by, by the way, at the same time, 
we've got all these big disruptions happening. The big disruptions are what? Well, cloud for a start. Look at this. Look at this screen here, ladies and gentlemen. You've got on your left your traditional IT. We then started virtualization and automation. We then brought in clouds. Well, it's not just a simple case of clouds, is it? No, it's private, it's managed, and it's public clouds. Well, what does that mean? Well, private clouds is operating your IT within your data center, so it's private. Nobody can get in. A managed cloud is using somebody like, um, I don't know, uh, Rackspace uh, or um, DXC technology. DXC technology used to be part, part of DXC technology, used to be part of Hewlett Packard Enterprise managed services. So, you know, you've got all this kind of stuff being done. And then on top of that, you've got the public cloud. And the public cloud, as we know, is Azure, Microsoft Azure, or uh, uh, AWS for the Amazon Web Service. So you've got all this kind of hybrid IT that we have to manage. It's very, very important that we do this. And it's very important that in doing so, we actually have a management system to to uh, to help us along the along the way. So every organization will have a management system and it's going to include some standards. We've, we're going to talk about ISO 20,000 here, but there's ISO 27,001, which is one on security. There's ISO 9,000, which is a, a quite a simple management system. We talk about organization design. We talk about organization culture. Whatever your management system is, it's about how you, not me, how you manage and organize everything that you do. That's what your management system is. And so we've got about five or six principles. Your management system will be part of your IT operating model. And I'll show you an example of that on our next slide. If you're managing IT, then guess what? You've got a management system. You might not think of it as having a management system, but you do. It's very much like people saying, I don't do idle. Well, I'm very sorry, but you do. Do you have errors in your system? Do you fix those errors in your systems? Yes, you do. Well, you're doing ITIL because ITIL refers to that as incident management and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> the people in great denial, you need to think again. Let's have a look at the positives though, because a management system will help you to provide, and this is what we're after, this is what organizations and businesses are after, consistency repeatable results, things that we can not only monitor, we can manage them and improve them, which is fantastic. So if you design your management system, it's more likely to meet your needs. Look at that thing that I put at the bottom of this slide. This is really, really important, ladies and gentlemen, and it's something that really gets me. Your management system is what you actually do, not what some standard or best practice says you should do. Well, doesn't that seem to me to be at odds with promoting ISO 20,000 and promoting ITIL? Me saying hey, you should do what you actually do, not what some standard or best practice says you should do. Well, I don't think that's at odds at all. I think everybody out here recognizes that a management system will help you to be consistent, be able to repeat stuff, you monitor, manage, etc. So everybody agrees that we need some form of management system. And guess what we need? To help us to do that, we need some help, advice, and guidance. So that's why we've all, you know, I'm, I'm a great believer in saying to people, take ITIL, adopt it, so adopt it, but adapt it to your way of working so that it actually fits in with what you actually do. What about ISO 20000 then? Well, ISO 20000, the way that it's been constructed, doesn't take all the ITIL processes or you, your references all the ITIL processes. It references a selection of the ITIL processes that surround and what we can class as a management system so that you can become consistent. 
you can repeat your results you can monitor you can manage and importantly you can improve so look at this standard some standards won't work for you not all standards i mean there's hundreds of standards out there guess what guys you're building your management system not anybody else's so pick on those standards and best practices frameworks methodologies you know so let's name a few cmmi cobit it for it devops whoa devops how does that fit in well devops is just a way of working it's not replacing any standards it's not replacing any frameworks it's not replacing any of your idle stuff it builds on what you've done it's just a better way of working but anyway i don't want to digress too much so let's be you know let's be confident your management system is what you actually do not what every standard or best practice says you should do and your your management system is actually part of this wonderful IT operating model. This is an example operating model. This is not a be all and end all. This gives you an example. If you start from the left and move all the way to the right, you've got the business with the lines of business. Then we'll go through customer relationship. You've got an IT strategy. You've got security in there. You've got everything that you can read on there. It's everything that you need to operate it is managing the business of it so the demand comes from the business the enterprise it in the bit in the middle will manage that supply and the key what i've mentioned this for is because look at your external providers remember as i said earlier how complicated we're becoming we're coming very very complicated why because there's more than one supplier when we are delivering services when we're talking about a service now you are guaranteed to have two or three different suppliers in delivering that service only a service that you are delivering in-house within your data center can you probably say that you're actually doing it with single supplier and that be your own it department as soon as you start moving out and start to in the wide area networks and have one office one in one in the uk one in the united states one in australia you're now dependent on a supplier whoa what kind of supplier well first of all a telecom supplier so how can you actually guarantee the quality of their service look at the way they manage their services look at the way they manage their it Look at the way they operate their IT. Isn't it good? Yeah. So you can look at organizations and say, hello, do you manage your services that we're going to buy off of you to any standards? Hello, ISO 20,000. Hello, ITIL. It's good, isn't it? This is why ITIL and ISO 20,000 and other methodologies and frameworks are good for us. Let's have a look what we should do when we're developing a management system. And this, to me, is really, really important, okay? Really, really important. In fact, I put it down there as a key point, okay? While you're reading all that, I'm going to say you really need to focus on the following. The value. What is the business value? What's the organizational value? Sometimes that might be money. Sometimes it just might not be money. So, for example, in a hospital, the... The IT department operating at wonderful efficiency might help to save lives faster. We don't necessarily know that, but we know that if we can get our patients' records to the doctors, to the various specialists around the hospital and distribute that information securely around that hospital, we can do it faster and faster and faster. It's going to improve the outcome of that patient and may, may be a driver in saving somebody's life. In terms of value from somebody else, you know, you get a new product. It might be a new, uh, it might be a new style of drink, say a new orange kind of drink. And they, the company wants to get it out to market. Your IT can help them to get to market faster. 
to get to market faster with using marketing, with sales, distribution, manufacture. Guess what, guys, in IT, we help to manufacture stuff. We help to distribute stuff. We help to market stuff. We help to retail stuff. All this is what we call organizational and business value. The outcomes, well, they're the what, what the business want. They want perceived business outcomes. And if I'm a biscuit manufacturer, I want to make my biscuits. I want to distribute my biscuits to the shop. And I want, ultimately, people to go into shops to buy my biscuits. That's my outcome. So I want to make that smooth, the creation of a biscuit, the dispatch of a business, the you know distribution of a biscuit into the shop so that somebody can come in and buy them. That's what I want. And I want IT to help me with that. Why? Because IT speeds things up. You know, you can automate the stuff and really speed things up really fast. But guess what? I want you to also manage the costs and I want you to tell me about if there's any risks. So this is what you should be doing when you develop a management system. Value, outcomes, cost and risk. But also you need to consider what it is your customers are trying to achieve. What's the end game for the customers? What's the end to end service? What suppliers are you in to manage? Are those suppliers, well, have they got ISO 20,000? Have they got, well, what guarantees have they got to make them a good service that you can depend on them? And this one at the bottom as well, transparency. I love that word transparency. I wish we were all a bit more transparent. If something goes wrong, the best thing you can do is put your hand up. Hello, I think I think that was my fault. Nobody should be there with a big stick saying, we're looking for somebody to blame, bosh and bash them on the head. No, with good transparency, you say, well, actually, I think I did something that caused that. As soon as you do that, we can actually get to the, the nub of the problem and fix it. That's what good transparency is. It's also saying, if you want a service level agreement of 98 or 99.999% and I am a, um, I'm a networking company, you know, a telco, and I come to you and say, well, actually, um, we, can't, we can't deliver 99.999%. Um, we can only deliver 98. They can turn around to me and say, well, you're not good enough. You need to improve. Or they can say, well, we're not using your service or we'll get somebody else. But I'm being transparent. I'm saying we this is what we'll guarantee. We can't guarantee 99 because of X, Y and Z or so on and so forth. That's what I mean by transparency. And do you know what? When people talk to people and they're transparent and honest and open, guess what? It builds a relationship and it builds a trust. And that's why I've actually said about these key points, about the focus and about the consideration. If any element of your management system doesn't support, why, why are you doing it? You know, what are the, what's the reason you get out of bed? Okay, next slide, there we go. So let's now go and talk about ISO 20,000. Well, it's not a product and it's not a service standard. OK, so it's not software as a service, a standard in that. And it says nothing. And this is key. It says nothing about the quality. So what is it then? Well, it is a management system standard. And it indicates it indicates that processes that are in place are relatively effective when they were last accessed. When they were last assessed. What does that mean? Well, can you do incident management as an idle pro process? Yes, we do. And I, as an auditor, can come around and say, show me that you do incident management. So you show me you do incident management. And guess what? I say, yep, yeah, that to me is incident management. And I'll give you a big tick in the box. What I'm not telling you or what, it not, what I'm not looking for as an auditor is how well do you do it? You might take an incident, a call on the service desk. Service desk, not in the standard, but incident management is. OK, service desk is the function. Incident management is the process that's being monitored. So the call comes on the service desk. Hello, I'll now put you into the incident management routine. 
they go into the incident management routine and maybe it takes them 15 to 20 minutes. Now, you might say in your organization, somebody on a call for 15 or 20 minutes, that's ridiculous. That's far too much. But I saw 20,000, the standard doesn't measure that. It doesn't say the quality of the service. It says, do you do incident management? Do you do problem management? Do you do X, Y, and Z man, you know, management processes? Yes, we do. And you'll get a tick for everyone that you can verify that you do. But it doesn't say anything about the quality of the services. Now, the good news about ISO 20000 is that one of the processes that it says that you must do and you must show that you do it is continual service improvement and by having that process as part of the standard it kind of you know gives a lot of comfort to people to say well it's this isn't just a tick box now this has got something in it that drives change that drives improvement and that is what we do really good isn't it anyway an organization must demonstrate it as good process governance. Well, what is good process governance? Well, it's good management control. That's all it is. Okay. Governance control. Governance of a process consists of all the following. Well, read it for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. That's why ISO 20000 is good for organizations. That's why ISO 20000 uh, is something that people can actually well, rest upon, I won't say rest upon, but be very, very comfortable with. If I say that I've got ISO 20,000, people are going to say, whoa, you've actually gone and actually, you know, been through an audit process and, and all that kind of trial and tribulation. And uh, so you were at a certain standard and I'm, I'm happy. It tells me there's a certain quality about your organization and that if I want to use part of your organization to deliver part of my service i've got a great deal of confidence in using you somebody who hasn't they might be great they might be fantastic but i still don't have that same level of confidence as i do with somebody with iso 20000 on board well so the main steps let's have a look at them you need to adopt what's called a registered service certification body an rcb who's that well that's a, a company like uh, i think pcb or uh, there's, there's plenty of them around <clears throat> so when you go into certification you need to confirm the scope and the scope is probably the biggest and most difficult thing that you're going to come across but here's some help talk to your registered certified body right your rcb will help you to scope the certification if you can't put it into the words you can you can put it into rough words <clears throat> but make sure that the rcb verifies the scope before you begin and then you can start then carrying out initial assessments to determine how ready you were you can develop an overall plan you can create a, a service improvement plans my apologies the SIP stands for service improvement plan which is following the Deming uh, principles of plan do check act you know plan what you're going to do do the work check how well you did and then act on the results and do you know what guys that's circular so you plan do check act plan do the work check how well you did and act on the results planned another improvement so on and so forth and then you'll get down to a, pi a final point where you can undergo a formal audit. Now, you know, there's plenty of these consultants around who can do ISO 20000 and help you on this journey. And it is well worth a journey to go on. And people say, well, oh, uh, it's too big. My organization is too big. The key about ISO 20000 certification is start small. They don't have to be massive it doesn't have to cover the whole thing it can cover one service if it covers one service which is fantastic it could be the payroll service and it could be limited for example the payroll service that you operate in new york you might be a global company but you're going to say let's get iso 20,000. let's get it right 
and let's start small. Let's have big plans, but let's start small. Let's do the payroll service out of the New York office. So you scope it out there and you just do the New York office. Now, you know you've got payroll departments in Singapore, uh, Melbourne and London, as well as New York, but you scope it just on that New York office. It makes it easier for you to manage and to get your head around it. Once you've got your head around it and you get that passed, you can then say, well, right, well, what we want to do now is expand this out and include the Singapore office and the Melbourne office and the London office. So you can start adding to the scope. And that's what you do. It's like a little snowball. You know, you get a little snowball at the top of the hill, you start rolling it, and by the time it comes to the bottom, it's really, you know, five or six times bigger, right? And that's the idea of ISO 20,000 certification. So, what's the rules on ICBs? You need at least two auditors that have got the auditor certificate. Uh, ICBs may not provide consulting. This is quite serious. They must not provide consulting because a conflict of interest could arise. OK, so make sure that your uh, uh, registered certified body is not trying to do your uh, uh, consultancy as well. OK, look at the scope of the certification. I've already mentioned that, so I'm not going to do it. There is some advice and guidance as to what you should do. OK, so the certification is not appropriate for an organization which provides best practice advice. Not. Yeah? It's about providing services. How do you manage these services? <clears throat> oh, my apologies. Yeah, I forgot that. Certification is not possible for a product or tool. OK, so if you've got um, software as a service, uh, or service anywhere from HPE or you've got service now or you've got uh, Marvel or you've got uh, Axios or something like that uh, these tools are all well and good but they are not in themselves ISO 20,000 you they're not you cannot have uh, the, the the standard on that and then there's some more advice the you know I've, I've talked about all this so I'll just skip on that it must include all the processes. You cannot be certified if one or two or more of the processes are out of scope. It's just not. It, ISO 20000 is all or nothing. OK, it's all or nothing. I mentioned this uh, in passing before. There's no need to control infrastructure services, but need to see how this affects the processes that are in control. So you don't need to control the infrastructure in the standard but it will affect how it's actually delivered, how you're delivering those services. Okay, so it's your responsibility to produce this evidence. So when you're thinking about it, you're thinking, well, how do I prove I'm doing incident management? How do I prove that I'm doing problem management? Well, if you look at problem management, problem management says you need to analyze the incident management to decide which ones we're going to adopt and start using and prioritize within problem management. So you need to start thinking about reports. And it's about these reports that you that you can prove the evidence. That's what it is. It's evidential. The auditors will say, you do incident management. Show me the last 10 incidents, please. Show me problem management. Show me the last problems that you were uh, that you dealt with and how and where they came from. OK. I think you've read that slide now, but basically you do an audit, you get passed, fantastic, every three years. Uh, we've done all this, so I think we'll move on for that. Just one thing while we're talking about slides and moving on, the key about slides, that there's a lot of slides here, there's about 50 slides. And the reason why I've produced 50 slides and I'm skipping through some of these is because I've talked about them, but when you actually ask for a copy of the slides, it will be a little journey for yourself. So it won't be just a ready reckoner. You won't say, well, when on this slide, what was John talking about? It's actually on the slide, although I'm not actually saying all the words. So this is for your benefit for if you want to use it later on. So there you go. You'll see that certificates are valid for three years. Well, that's kind of repeating what I said earlier insofar as you need to do an audit every three years. 
This is the interrelationships that we're now going to get through to ITIL with. So if we look at your internal processes and procedures, level one up, you go to ITIL uh, and then you talk to this manager's guide on how to implement. You then talk about ISO 20,000 part two and ISO 20,000 part one. And we'll come on to that in a second. But let's have a look now at what it is we're dealing with. And this is very, very important, ladies and gentlemen, and it's on the left-hand side of the slide, so I'm hoping you've already read it. I, in fact, I'm sure you have. The standard says what you shall do. So in other words, you shall do management responsibility. You shall uh, do governance of processes. You shall do documentation management. You shall do capacity management. You shall do incident and requests and service management. All that, everything says you shall do it. There's none of it you shall not, right? So these are all you shalls. These are dictatorial. You will do this. If you do not do these things, you will fail. So where does ISIL come in? Well, fantastic. ITIL comes in and says, we will show you how. So we will show you how to do capacity management. We will how, show you how to do supplier management, incident management, problem management, uh, so on and so forth. ITIL will help to show you how, which is why this is a great combination for your ITIL skills. You know, everything that we do in ISO 20,000, well, it's based on ITIL. There are other things like documentation management that ITIL doesn't really cover in any detail. But you've got 90% of everything that you need to do for ISO 20,000 here, which is really good. So looking at some benefits, just whipping through this now, quality and confidence, we mentioned that earlier. Uh, it's easier to justify or even combat outsourcing. So if you want to justify outsourcing, or combat outsourcing, argue against it, ISO 20000 helps you to do both. How can it do that? Well, you say, well, if we adopt ISO 20000 internally, we are proving that we are up to the mark. We're up there with the best of them. If you want to do some outsourcing, you can say, well, we'll only choose outsourcing organizations with ISO 20000. Why? Because we've got a measure of trust. And when you do outsourcing, it's 90% of it is trust, right? Get around the table, agree things. When you move away from the table and start implementing that, if you don't get back around that table, guess what? It will start breaking down. So outsourcing is like a very good marriage, okay? You don't want it to end in divorce. So this is what HPE, we help to develop this standard. I'm not going to dwell on this. We do the ITIL training. We do the consultancy. We do provide tools. HPE is not a registered certified body and is therefore independent. We can do the consultancy. We cannot do your audit. That has to be done with a registered certified body. So, yeah, we help to do this. I'll move on now and show you a scope. Look at this scope. This is an HPE scope. And it covered 50 data centers, 50 data centers. Just think, ladies and gentlemen, how much money we're saving by doing this. OK, because we covered off one scope and applied that scope to 50 data centers. Wow. Wow. -ha -ha. Just the cost on individual data centers, getting that certification was phenomenal. We saved 30% just on certification fees because we created a scope that was applicable to all our data centers. Now, why don't you read that? Read that scope, and I'm sure you have already. So basically, it's saying that What, was, what it's saying is that we support the provision of IT infrastructure services and application management services by Hewlett Packard Enterprise Services delivery sites, the data centers, to our contracted global customers in accordance with the latest version of the service catalog. So in other words, we will apply and update all our global customers from these data centers according to our current service catalog. Terrific. Anyway, let's you study that at your leisure, because that's how you achieve 
best practice, sorry, uh, that's how you achieve ISO 20,000. And that's an example of how HPE did it. It's not everything, remember. We focus on something that we do that's repeatable time and time again. And we said, well, we do it so well, why don't we get a ticket for it? And we did. So let's have a look at ITIL. We've mentioned a few of the processes, but how big is ITIL? Well, it's the, it's the worldwide recognized framework of all time, right? It's been going many, many years. I've been doing it since I was, uh, well, quite old um, now I've been doing it for over 30 years I remember when ITIL was uh, something like 40 books um, they then got transitioned down into uh, seven books and now we're currently on the five books and it focuses on what I've said before these outcomes value costs and risk and it's about creating customer value it talks about people process partners and technology to deliver services remember what I said the services that we provide nowadays, there's more than one supplier in that. So we have to, you know, look at that as well. And they're based on the five books, which are there for you to read if that's what you want. There are 26 processes, which basically says how to understand customers, the markets, the finances, everything that you need, in my opinion, to actually manage an IT service. It's to actually to manage, create and improve an IT service. And as I said before, we've got a key concept here, which is adopt and adapt. You know, ITIL itself is not a standard or at the same time, it's not a strict set of rules. You know, you don't get whipped if you don't do something. It's not thou shalt do this or thou shalt burn. No, 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 no. ITIL says, you know, I did this in my organization, and I think your organization might benefit from it. We're having a conversation. It's called sharing, sharing best practice. So what I've done in my organization, I'm saying, might be suitable for your organization. And what's the most difficult thing in the world, ladies and gentlemen? It's starting with a blank piece of paper. If you start with a blank piece of paper, you get writer's block and you just don't know where to start. But if I give you this piece of paper here, yeah, and you then say, well, I'll take what's on these these things. One, two, three, four, five things on the top. One, two, three, four, five things on the bottom. These give me some ideas. Now, you might say, number one, I don't need that. Number four, I don't need that. But I'll use number two, two three, and five. That's what ITIL is suggesting you do. That's what ITIL wants you to do. And that's why I saw 20,000, which is a standard, which says you will do this, you will do that, is being adopted across the planet because it's based on ITIL. It's based on ITIL, which is absolutely fantastic. So if we have a look at ITIL again under these um, summary and the reason why I've got ITIL around uh, in the center of all these things around it notice around it it might be a bit difficult to read but when you get the slides you'll see it you've got things like agile project management you've got security you've got ITIL itself you've got CSFs critical success factors and key performance indicators you've got COVID and governance you've got SIAM which stands for service integration and management you've got DevOps all these are additional methodologies and frameworks that surround ITIL for part of your big management system. So think of those. But anyway, let's go back onto this. It's focus on creating business value, it manages costs and risks. Without ITIL, it will be very, 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 very difficult to create these consistent, repeatable, reliable, effective service management processes. Remember what the business is about it wants consistency let's have a look at 20,000 and ITIL now and there's three ways in my opinion to look at it I saw 20,000 says you shall do so it specifies what needs to be done and ITIL will provide you the guidance on how to do it I saw 20,000 it's got the requirements company need for commit for compliance and ITIL provides that body of detail, that knowledge and information 
on how to do it. If you think of ISO 20000 as the top, the pinnacle of a pyramid, ITIL sits underneath it, supporting that pyramid, supporting that standard. That's what it does, which is cool. So part one defines the minimum quality of IT that you need to do. And it basically says, ISO 20000 part one defines the minimum level of quality of the service that you want. And that's what you get your certification against. Part two is kind of a condensed bit of guidance. It says, while you should be doing all this stuff, you might want to consider doing this as well to help you to grow as an organization. To, in other words, to make ISO 20000 a bit better than just doing the bare minimum. And obviously, it's then aligned with uh, best practice in service management. So let's have a look at some of these things and we'll get through these. We've got about five minutes or 10 minutes to go with this. So if we look here, and this is why I put them in boxes, I saw 20,000, I'm gonna read this out just a little bit. I saw 20,000 is a standard that states what must be in place. ITIL provides the best practice guidelines on IT service management. I saw 20,000 requires <coughs> requirements are documented in less than 26 pages. ITIL, however, comprises five substantial books. These books are 300 pages long. I might be wrong with a couple of, you know, couple of pages, but about 300 pages long. So you can see that the requirements of ISO 20,000 are quite stark because we said you shall do this. ITIL says how you should do it. So obviously it's going to be a bit more substantial. I'm not going to read through each one of these, ladies and gentlemen, because I've done them, I've created them for your future, future, uh, uh, you know, reference, if you like. So this is why on the ITIL side, the last one says each business, it's really important guys, each business should adopt and adapt the processes as appropriate to its circumstances. Right? That's really, really important. You've got to ask yourself, is ISO 20,000 good for me? Is it good for my company? Well, I think that in both cases, the answer is yes. It will cost you money to do this. But guess what? You will get something at the end of it that you can, well, you can be quite rightly proud of. You're saying, I follow a certain standard. Yeah, My services or the service that I provide, whatever, how you scope it, I'm running these services to a specific standard. And what you can then say, if you want to help me, how can I improve that? And that's what we're about. So I'll move on because uh, you've read that. No, you just skipped over that. <clears throat> um, the key points in planning in terms of service and uh, ISO 20,000 are this Plan Do Check Act. That is exactly what the Plan Do Check Act is, is in ITIL. And in continual service improvement model in ITIL, it, it actually tells you how to do the Plan Do Check Act. Because before you can Plan Do Check Act, you've got to ask yourself, what's the vision? Where are we now? Where do we want to be? What's my benchmark? If I hit that bench, how do I know if I'm going to hit the benchmark? How do I know if I get there? You know? So ITIL will help you to do all this plan, do, check, act. It will help you to create a improvement plan that ISO 20000 says you shall create. Look at service level management. It says, Service level management and service reporting are distinct process within the service delivery. Oh, we know that. But service level management is a lot more detailed. It will tell you what you want to do. For example, when you do service level management, people think, well, it's just agreeing 99% availability. Is it really? I mean, is it really? Do your customers really want to know that you are 99%? What about if they really wanted to know what outages occurred in the service and what did you do about fixing them and what can they do to help you to make that service better so that's where we are with that and let's have another look at them i've done quite quite a few of these look at this one here i saw 20 000 part one additional supporting material you've got 12 additional parts to it which is fantastic 
Yeah. So here's one. Look at number nine. ISO guidance on the application of ISO 20000 to cloud services. This is really, really good stuff. So it's not as though people have been staying, standing still. No, we're still making ISO 20000 relevant to today. Remember what I said earlier at the beginning of this presentation. We live in a complicated society now. Delivering services is getting massively more complicated. Cloud services is one of the big disruptors of our age. People expect things, click your fingers, I want it tomorrow. We need to know how to manage that. And if you can say that you're managing it to ISO 20,000, it's fantastic. It's a, it's a differentiator. That's what ISO 20,000, ITIL has got all the skill sets you need to deliver ISO 20,000. And ISO 20,000, in my honest opinion, is a differentiator. It says, you know what your organization is about. You know where your organization is going. You know where your organization is going and how it's going to support the ever-changing organizational and business needs. It also says that you're going to embrace DevOps. It says you're also going to embrace COVID or parts of COVID or parts of DevOps. I don't mind. DevOps is fantastic. Look at it for what it is. It doesn't replace ITIL. It builds on ITIL. It brings groups of people together. The business for a start. Development, security, uh, operations people. You know, everybody that's involved in delivering a service. DevOps does not mean just dev and ops. It means everybody involved in creating a service or in delivering a service. Everybody with a vested interest. Get them in the same room. And then it means doing things small in small, repeatable chunks, which is what ITIL does, doesn't it? Wow, terrific. So you need to change things around. Of course you do. Not a problem. How do we do this? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's, you know, if we're going to go down this path, let's get serious. And we need to talk about the ISO 20,000 qualifications and the ITIL qualifications. So understand the relationship between them. And to do so, you need to actually go on kind of a course. And I'm going to suggest that the foundation exam is not for everybody, not for everybody, it's for a lot of people, but it's certainly for any internal auditors that you've got. It's got anybody that's going to be managing this transition to ISO 20,000 or to achieve ISO 20,000. Anybody that's going to be involved in helping you to achieve ISO 20,000 should do at least the foundation exam. The practitioner are those people who are going to apply the content of the ISO of the standard. Okay, because they need to a create a scoping document, or sorry, a scoping statement. They need to negotiate with the external RCBs, the registered certified bodies. They need to negotiate and probably talk to their own internal auditors. Terrific. So, you know, even your internal auditors, I would send on this. And then you've got your auditor benefits as well, which is what the RCBs have to do. OK, they have to do this. And I would get all your internal auditors to do this. Why? Because it's not only understanding the standard. What you want to do, don't wait every three years before you audit it. Get your auditors to audit you every 12 months. And this is the one thing about auditors. I used to run a data center. I had 130 people in various roles and responsibilities. And, <clears throat> you know, my first audit, I, I was frightened to bits and I was really worried about audits. And, and uh, this auditor came up to me and it, and it was a, a bloke and he just said, um, you're quite nervous about this. I said, I'm very nervous about this. He said, let's go for a coffee. So we went for a coffee and we talked about what auditors do. Auditors help you to improve. Auditors are not there to shoot you or to beat you with a stick. Auditors there are to trying to help you to deliver a better service, a better quality of service. And after him saying that, and buying me the coffee, I suppose, <clears throat> I kind of embraced auditors. And I would like you guys to do the same. I'd love you to embrace auditors. In fact, I think auditors would love you to do the same. Anyway. <clears throat> That's the auditor exam. It tells you about the exam format and so on and so forth. You can read all this later. Um, 
these are all the ITIL processes. Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, far too many. I'm just going to run straight away. The center is the business outcome. The strategy is one of the books. Design is another transition, operation, and continual improvement. This is the curriculum path, and you can do any of this. Now, this is why we're saying that ITIL skills is such a great combination for your ISO 20,000 skills. I mean, with this knowledge and experience, doing ISO 20,000, it's not a breeze, it is difficult, but it's a lot easier to do if you've got these people. And let me just start off now, you do not need everyone to be an ITIL master. You do not need everyone to be an ITIL expert. You do need people to understand what it's about. So, you know, blanket, put a lot of people through the, the foundation and put selected people through the various capability or life cycle modules. I'd now like to pass uh, back over to Arita and she'll talk to you about the uh, uh, P PECB. So, Arita. Thank you, John, for this great and very informative webinar. It is an honor to have you as a speaker. Before we continue with the question and answer session, I would like to inform all the attendees that PCB provides training and certification services for ISO 20000 Introduction, Foundation, Lead Implementer and Lead Auditor. This training is designed to provide you with the required knowledge on how to implement and manage the quality of this information technology services. A PCB certificate will demonstrate your dedication in implementing and managing these processes and frameworks, and most importantly, you will be recognized worldwide. For more information, please visit our website www.pcb.com slash training. We will now proceed with the questions. So before we go with the first question, I have one comment that uh, one attendee wrote. With ISO 20000 certification, the auditor will look for the evidence of this being done according to the requirements and the documented process within the management system and not only say, do you do incident management? John. No, I agree. No, sorry. So can you just repeat that again, please? Yes. They're looking for evidence. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So the auditor what was the last bit? evidence of uh, this being done according to the requirements and the documented process yes. within the management system, and not only yes. say, do you do incident management? Oh, uh, my apologies. Yes, I I must have given the impression that they will always that they that they. Just ask whether or not you do incident management. No, they have a strict uh, uh, auditing process, and every one of the of the shells. You know what I said about uh, I saw twenty thousand says you shall do this, 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 and this. That audit process goes through all the shells, so it does cover all the processes uh, and terminology that is in the standard. They 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 audit everything, and they want to see evidence that you are doing everything that is in the standards. It's not limited to one or more processes, no. Okay, so we will now go with the first question. One attendee wrote, where do ISO 20000 fit in COVID-5? So ISO, ISO 20000 uh, is, well, if you look at COVID-5, is is a governance. It's mainly a governance, a lot of processes that help you with your governance of your organization. ISO 20000 sits alongside it to say, with these particular processes, we do these to this particular standard. So as part of the governance, you're saying, we do this to this ISO 20000 standard. So it doesn't necessarily fit inside it, it sits alongside it. It is complementary to it. Thank you, John, for this answer. We will now go with the next question. Is ISO 20000 applicable to an organization or individual or both? No, ISO 20000 is applicable to an organization and further applicable onto the scoping of that organization. So it's in the scoping statement and the scoping statement will not involve any reference to any individual. It will be about a particular service or services. Thank you, John. The next question is, can an ISO 20000 lead implementer be equal to an ITIL expert? That, that's a very good question. Um, and not one that I can answer. What I think would be appropriate is if you want to, you can uh, 
uh, why don't you put it onto a LinkedIn, one of the uh, the forums on LinkedIn, or send it directly to Axlos. So Axlos uh, on the uh, intellectual property for um, uh, ITIL, and I think that that's a very good question for them to uh, to 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 answer. I think the answer will be no. Um, but what would be quite appropriate would be that the lead implementer course receives idle points. If I may, Arita, can I just skip back in this? If you look at this diagram here, you will see the idle expert. And you'll see to get to the idle expert, you need a certain number of points. And it tells you on this diagram, not a problem. If you see service strategy, uh, they have three points each. The lifecycle modules, the capability, have four points each. What I think would be appropriate would be on the journey to ITIL expert. If you then said that the ISO 20,000 lead implementer was the equivalent of five points, then going back on here, you could say the 22 points that make up an ITIL expert, you've got, for example, uh, the two points for foundation, and now you've become a lead implementer, that's five points, you've already got seven. Now you need to take some more idle courses in order to get to the 22 points. I would actually ask Axlos to say, listen, um, how many points will you give a lead implementer uh, towards your idle expert qualification? That's a good question, really good. And one thing, that if they say nothing, they say, well, well, that's a bit mean. And I'm saying this now, right? That would be a bit mean because ITIL underpins ISO 20000. And as a lead implementer of ISO 20000, you've got to have a broad range of ITIL expertise. A great question. Thank you, John, for this interesting answer. Uh, we will now go with the next question. I don't have an IT background. Can I still do ITIL? Yes, I mean, it's, you don't have an ITIL background. Yes, ITIL uh, is a set of processes that can be, uh, um, you know, it, it can be adopted uh, outside of ITIL. I know that for a fact, yeah. If you, if you listen to the police, <clears throat> if something goes wrong and the, the police, the police or the fire service, the fire and rescue service, they'll say something's, got, something's happened and they'll report that as there has been an incident. Something's happened that's not quite right. That's what incident management is in ITIL. So you don't have to have an, uh, an IT, uh, sorry, an IT background. In fact, Hewlett Packard Enterprise and myself, I actually created, along with a couple of universities in the UK, a program for university students as part of a business management degree to take the ITIL Foundation. It's cool, isn't it? So no, you don't need an ITIL back, uh, an IT background. It's great stuff, actually. Thank you, John. We will now go with the next question. One attendee wrote, the scope of audit, it must cover all 26 processes and the four functions? Well, yes, that's exactly it. Uh, so, no, 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 my apologies. Well, hush my mouth. I misheard the question. The scoping of a 20,000, uh, of an ISO 20,000 uh, uh, audit does not cover all 26 ITIL processes and the four functions. So if I go back to this this screen here, all these processes here, they're not all included in the ISO 20000. Not all of them are included. I can't remember where the slide is. It's probably way back and I don't want to, uh, you know, run all the way back. But there are, so I think there's 10 processes within, I, I could be wrong here. I think there's about 10 processes, ITIL processes within ISO 20,000 that you've got to be, um, that you will be audited on. So certainly not all 26. My apologies for misunderstanding the question initially. No problem. Thank you for the answer. Uh, we have received a lot of questions, but because of the time limitation, we will only go with the last question yeah. and the remaining ones okay. uh, will be answered by John through email. So the last question yeah. is, I work in software management. Is ITIL for me? Yes. Because you distribute your software, don't you? You change your software, you distribute it, things go wrong with your software. So uh, let me give you some examples of processes that you'll be dealing with. You'll be dealing with change management, you'll be dealing with release management, you'll be testing and validating your software, 
you'll be uh, uh, doing uh, requests for change. So you want, you know, if people want to improve your software, they'll say, can we have this facility? Can we have that facility? So you'll be doing requests for change. Uh, things will go wrong with your software and that you need to fix. So you'll be doing incident management, you'll be doing problem management. Uh, so yeah, you've been doing all kinds of stuff, yeah. You, your software that you send out, you'll say you're guaranteed, will you? Okay, what are you going to guarantee that? Is that going to be a service level agreement? If it's software as a service and it's up part of a cloud environment, then it's part of a an overall IT service. So now you've got service level agreements. You've got suppliers, so you might use Rackspace or AWS or Azure to, to, to host it in the cloud. So, yeah, your software, of course it does idle, yeah. But good question. Thank you very much. Once again, thank you, John, for this excellent presentation. And I want to thank all the attendees as well who have joined us today. We hope you enjoyed this webinar. In the upcoming days, we will send you the recording link along with the uh, slides, which will be uploaded on our official YouTube channel and in our website, pcb.com. On behalf of PCB and John, thank you for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.